Hello guys, welcome to our class. This is Nobleman Science Tutors Online. I hope you are doing very well and you are fine and uh, you are enjoying our physics class on YouTube. So please guys, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to this channel, click on the notification button so that when we upload a new video, YouTube will notify you. Also, place your comment on the comment section. Give us a thumbs up to encourage us so that we we'll continue to dish out more quality lectures. So for this particular class, we are going to be looking at graphs of motion. Graphs of motion, because we've discussed motion, we've discussed motion, we've discussed relative motion. So in each of those motion, there are some graphs that you can use to represent them. So that is what we are going to consider in this particular class. So welcome to our class today. And we are, as I said, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe now. Click on the subscribe button, the red button below not on the one that is showing on the video the one that is below click on it then click on the notification on the notification button the bell that is ringing click on that one so that when we upload a new video youtube will notify you so right away we're going to our class welcome okay so this is our first graph that we'll be looking at this is a distant time graph so for you to draw a distance time graph, you have to plot values of distance on the vertical axis and different values of time on the horizontal axis. Right. So this is an example of a distance time graph. This shows you increasing distance with uh, increasing time. Increasing distance with increasing time. So this is distance one and this is distance two. Now what you are going to get from this particular graph is the slope. Now the, you know that distance is um, speed is distance all over time. Speed is distance over time. So if you plot, if you take the values of distance all over time, you are going to get speed. So which means that the slope of this particular graph is equal to the speed. So if they give you a graph like this and you're asked to find the speed of the particle that has distances, what you just need to do is to find the slope of the graph and then you will get the speed. So basically this is just what I've said, the slope is equal to change of distance over change of time which is equal to the speed. So that is what you'll get from a distance time graph. So in your question, if you are asked what um, what you get from distance time graph, what you have from it is the slope of the graph and the slope is the speed. What you get from a distance time graph is the, is the speed of the particle that has these different distances. So that is this times times graph. Okay, so slope d2 minus d1 difference of the distances all over difference in time that gives you the speed of the particle so this is what you get or what you derive from a distance time graph this is a distance time graph for a constant speed when the speed is constant it means that see the distance is not changing so for a constant speed the slope is equals to zero so for this particular graph the slope is zero and which means the speed is zero so the speed is constant so the speed is zero so this is another type of graph that you also get from a uh, motion all right so we also have a velocity time graph the velocity time graph is drawn by taking various values of velocity and put them on the vertical axis and then you also take various values of time and put them on the axis. Now for a uniformly oscillated body, for uniformly oscillated body, it means that the rate of change of velocity with time is what is constant. So when you say a body is uniformly accelerated, it means that the rate of change of velocity with time is a constant. And this is a graph that is used to represent that motion. 
this is a graph that I used to represent that motion. Now, what you get from this particular graph is the acceleration of the body. You know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity all over time. So what you are going to get from a velocity time graph is the acceleration of the body. And that is what is represented by this equation. The slope of the graph is change in velocity all over change in time, which is equal to acceleration. It's equal to acceleration. So that's what you get from a velocity time graph. And that is change in velocity V2 minus V1 all over T2 minus T1. This is what you get from a velocity time graph. So basically, if you are asked to find the slope or if you are asked to find the velocity or the acceleration from a velocity time graph, what you just need to do is to find the slope of the graph. So if you are given a velocity time graph and say, find the acceleration of this body, just find the slope of the graph, you get the acceleration of the body. Right? So that is it. Same thing for acceleration, same thing for deceleration. For deceleration, it means that the rate of decrease in velocity, this uniform deceleration, you know, deceleration is opposite to acceleration. Acceleration is that your velocity is increasing. Why deceleration is that your velocity is decreasing. Maybe you are traveling with a car, and then you step on the brake. When you are traveling, as you are moving, you are accelerating, and then your velocity is increasing. But when you step on your brake, you start to decelerate, and your velocity begins to come down. So if you look at this graph very well, you see that your initial velocity is wholly higher than your final velocity for deceleration because you are going down you are going towards a stop you are going towards a rest so your initial velocity is always higher than your final velocity and that is why you always have negative answer for deceleration because it's like negative acceleration so the rate of decrease in velocity with time if it is constant you say the body is decelerating uniformly the body is doing what decelerating uniform and this is a graph that is used to represent uniform deceleration uniform deceleration this is a graph to represent it okay because in most of your physics question they will draw some grammars and ask you what um what principle or what is represented by this graph so you should be able to interpret your motion graph you should be able to interpret them right so the slope of a velocity time graph gives you acceleration or deceleration as the case may be as the case may be for this particular case this is deceleration if you look at it your v2 minus v1 we give you a negative because the v2 is lower than your v1 and so automatically that gives you a negative acceleration which is equal to retardation or deceleration i hope that is clear okay so this is velocity time graph for constant velocity when your velocity is constant it means that the body is not accelerating is that okay the body is not accelerating so your velocity is constant so in this particular case your acceleration is equal to zero yeah so this one is for constant velocity your acceleration is equal to zero so you should be able to differentiate each and in each and every one of the graphs right so please try and draw all these graphs in your note and label them accordingly know which one is this and which one is that label them accordingly and put down the formations the slope of this particular graph is uh, zero because your velocity is constant acceleration is not taking place here all right so that is for this particular graph yeah. this is for a non-uniform velocity non-uniform velocity if you look at the velocity it's not uniform all right so and for you to get um, velocity as a slope it means that you are plotting displacement against time you know that velocity is equal to displacement all over time right so this graph is for non-uniform velocity please take notes these are the graphs that they bring for you in, in wire can jam 
this is for a non-uniform velocity. Take note. Okay. Sometimes they will still give you the graph or ask you to determine which graph is for a body that is projected vertically upward. You know that when a body is projected vertically upward, the velocity will begin to decrease as it's going up until it will get to the highest point. It will stop momentarily and then start to come down. As it's coming down, you know it will coming down with uh, increasing velocity. So the graph sometimes is confusing to students, right? So this is a graph that represents that type of motion. If you look at it, when you project the ball forward, the velocity will start to come down. The velocity will be decreasing until when it gets to the highest point, which is the point. At this highest point, the final velocity is equals to zero. Yes, at the highest point, the final velocity is equals to zero because the ball will stop momentarily before it will start to come down. And when it starts to come down, what will happen? The velocity will start to increase. So that motion is represented by this graph. Please take note of this graph. That motion is represented by this graph. So for a ball projected vertically upwards, the velocity will decrease gradually as the ball rises until it attains maximum height, where V is equal to zero before it will start to descend with increased velocity until it hits the ground. So at this point, the ball will hit the ground. At this point, the ball will hit the ground. So this is the velocity time graph for that particular type of uh, motion, All right? Okay. So we also have a displacement time graph. For this particular graph, we are going to take the values of displacement on the vertical y-axis and then put the values of time on the horizontal axis as s axis so for this particular graph the information i'll get going to get from here is velocity you know that velocity is equals to displacement over time velocity is displacement over time so the information you get from the slope of this graph is your velocity okay so this is what i've said that the slope of the graph is velocity change in displacement all over change in time that is d2 minus d1 all over t2 minus t1 okay so what you have from this particular for a displacement time graph is equals to your velocity and that's equal to the slope the slope of a displacement time graph is equals to velocity it's equals to velocity so I hope that one is clear and you are following. Please draw all these graphs inside your notebook because you will have to review them. Is that okay? You will need to review them. So thank you so much. Right, so we are going to take an example from this our study so far. The equation says two points on a velocity time graph have coordinates 5 seconds, 10 meters per second, and 20 seconds, 20 meters per second. Calculate the mean acceleration between the two points. This is a giant question. You see, very simple. I mean, the question looks very simple, but how do you go about it? If you look at the velocity time graph, you see that you can actually represent it. Um, even if my line is not straight, please, you just pardon me and take it. Okay, so you have one velocity point here, another point, you have another point, you have another point. Okay, so this is your velocity and then this is your time. So you can, if you pull those points here, right, so you have T1, this is your T2, 20, this is your V1. Is your V1 10 and your V2 here 20? You know that from a velocity time graph, what you have is your acceleration, right? What you get is your acceleration. So, acceleration is equal to your V2. This is your V2, and this is your V1. 
and this is your T1 and this is your T2 okay so the mean acceleration is will now be if you substitute these values substitute these values that you have here into into what we have that's what we have got here into the equation that I will write here you have um, v2 minus v1 all over t2 minus t1 so that gives you that gives you 20 minus 10 all over what 20 minus 5 so from here now you have what 10 over 15 you have 10 over 15 so that gives you acceleration you can do that uh, calculation so that you can have your acceleration so 10 over 5 will give you 10 divided by 15 so that gives you 0 0.6 like 0 0.666 so that is approximately 0 0.67 meters per seconds squared remember that is the unit of acceleration so for this particular case this will be the mean acceleration for this uh, velocity time graph so please take note this side to solve problems on velocity time graph you should be able to draw your graph sorry for this graph but make your own to be straight but just follow the points the way they are located here then you know that the slope of a velocity time graph gives you an acceleration and that is what you have done using this uh, the slope of the graph so thanks a lot we're going straight to your test page so you can have this so this is your test page right so solve the problem a bird flies at 10 meters per second for t 3 seconds 15 meters per second for 3 seconds 20 meters per second for 4 seconds calculate the base average speed you should know what is average right you should know what is uh, average average speed of the bed so that's what you are going to do do this calculation and then put your comments or your answers on the comment section below or you can put it on the whatsapp you click on the whatsapp link to take you to our whatsapp chat group put your answers there i'll look at all the answers and review them so thanks a whole lot for this um, for listening to us All right, guys, thank you so much. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please, what are you waiting for? Subscribe and click on the notification button. Also, invite your friends to come and enjoy our physics class on YouTube. So, we are going to see you in our next class. Thanks a lot.